Tobin here. It's the end of the month and I hadn't recorded anything and I said, oh crap. So, I do have a couple things to talk about though. I just completed building a standing desk, uh, like building from parts, not in a kit, like different parts, which kind of makes me a maker, I think, even though I didn't use an Arduino board. Does that still count? I don't know. But I made a standing desk, and we'll take a look at that, and I'll tell you about the parts, and it was really, really cheap to build, and I love it. And a couple random pieces of gear I picked up lately that I think are just awesome. So, let's get right into it. This will be a short one, because, you know, I got stuff to do. I have so much stuff to do. This down here, that's like Bioshock Infinite, still in the plastic. That's how much stuff I got going on right now. Without further ado, the standing desk. Ooh, I hope that doesn't get me a DMCA takedown request. Standing desk, 78 inches long. Goes on forever. I have so much space that I don't know what to do with all of it. And below that, we have some storage and basically a, a you know, 16-inch boost for equipment that doesn't go on the desktop, but I need to throw wires through there. Like your desktop PC, your power supply, networking stuff, PlayStation. Stuff you just don't need to fiddle with all the time. It needs to, you know, get wires up there. That's the new standing desk. It is awesome. I love this thing. Basically, this is uh, mostly Ikea parts. This is a lemon, lemon, I don't know, something Swedish sounding. I'll put links in the show notes. Desktop. It is 78 inches long, so it goes on forever. It comes out about 24 inches deep, and it's like one and three quarter inches thick. And oh, I love this thing. It is just goes on forever. It looks gorgeous. It goes right up against the wall. It's hard mounted to the wall, so it has this floating look, which I really like. Basically, that is two brackets from Home Depot, and they are rated to 600 pounds a piece. So you could really put anything on this desktop. You could even throw your significant other on this desktop. You know what I'm saying? So there's two of these. Rated 600 pounds a piece. And two is really all you need for this. It's 78 inch, eight inches long. So if you're using a real wood, you might want more just for support to keep the wood from warping over time. But this is like semi wood space age polymer Ikea thing. So it's like just machine milled straight. Don't need it. So two brackets to hold it to the wall. Ooh. Pro tip, make sure you screw it into a stud. If you just screw it into the drywall, that will lead to disappointment. Down here below, this is an Ikea Expedit single wide shelf laid on its side. It's like 72 inches long, so it's about the same length. I just have it centered up under there. And again, that has all the hardware you need to connect up and a lot of good storage space and it is the all important footrest because when you are doing a standing desk you need something to put your foot on every now and again and do kind of a Captain Morgan plus as I'm sure you all know if you can't do a Captain Morgan you can't write PHP this was all very inexpensive uh, the desktop was 45 bucks the brackets were 10 bucks a pop this bottom exhibited shelf was 60 bucks so you're looking at like 125 bucks all told before tax for this huge giant standing desk setup really really love this the old standing desk has gone to work and it works out very well there 
Plus, I think my coworkers like it because uh, not only is it a curiosity, but because when I have my headphones at a standing desk and you're coding, you're like, mm, 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 mm. and I think my coworkers must like that because they stand outside and watch it. And what else could that be other than like, I don't, I can't think of anything. Now the monitors up here, uh, you can just have your monitors on the regular stands on the desktop. I'm freakishly tall, so I pick those up a little bit and mount them, them to the wall. Mono Price is a good place to look for those kind of wall brackets. They have just dozens and dozens of different kinds and they're very, very cheap. These have uh, some 20 degree forward and backward tilt and a little bit of side to side tilt adjustment. And you can pull them quite a ways out to the wall from the wall, like 18, up to 18 inches and tilt them and move them around a little bit. They were like 18 bucks a pop. So mono price is the place to go looking for that kind of thing if you need it. That's the standing desk. I'll put links to all the parts in the show notes. And I really, really, really like this thing. Now, a couple of bits of hardware I picked up recently that I also really like that I wanted to talk about. One is a Samsung Chromebook. I don't, it's one of those where it's like the Samsung Chromebook E79 Delta Alpha Omega 72 Charlie Fox. It's one of those, but it's just the cheapest Samsung Chromebook if you're looking for. Them. Uh, I got it for 175 refurb on Amazon Warehouse. I love this thing. The battery lasts all day long. It starts almost instantly. It wakes up from sleep instantly. Never had a problem with Wi-Fi connection to any of the networks I've tried. Uh, has an HDMI out port that works great. I just tried it the other day in a work meeting because somebody had like a million dollar Apple with no HDMI out port because because suck that's why and uh, I plug this right in and it just instantly second screen 1080p no problems it is completely silent it's fanless it's using basically a, a dual core snapdragon you know tablet style processor and graphics so no CPU fan no GPU fan it's a 16 gigabyte SSD no hard drive noise completely ventless and silent uh, it's uh, you know the 720p ish style screen 1370 by blah 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 the keyboard's really good the trackpad's pretty good the screen is okay you're not getting an IPS panel on a 14 inch screen for 175 bucks but it's okay the biggest downer on it for whatever reason is the sound the sound is shit and I'm not sure why that is. It's uh, the, through the, the speakers on are okay, but plug in some headphones, any headphones, and it sounds like you're listening in an aquarium filled with suck. I don't know why that is. But I just picked up this little Turtle Beach uh, USB DAC digital audio converter. It's driverless. On, on a whim, they're like 25 bucks, and plugged it in, and that sounds great. And it just works. It's a little funny with the volume control using the DAC because it's, uh, I, I almost blew out my eardrums when I put it in the first time. You have to like lower things down quite a bit and you only get a couple notches between nothing and uh, uh, death. So it's a little funny, but that solved the sound problem for me. Now I'm very, very happy with it. I love this thing. All day battery life. Basically after I got it, I put down my iPad and I have not picked it up since. This thing does uh, Netflix too as well, really, really good. So I really like this. The next thing, let's talk about monitors because you're looking at those thinking those are monitors and you're right, but they're also liars, big, big, fat liars, big liars, because they tell you things are one color and they're really not, they're something else. And if you got two monitors, you'll have the same color, you know, you'll have a color and you'll drag it from this monitor to this monitor and it'll change on you. Big, fat, hairy liars. So what you need to do is use some color calibration tools on those suckers. 
Now I run, you know, Linuxy stuff and open source software, and there's not a whole lot in the color calibration space for you, except for the color hug. This is open source hardware. It's made by one of the guys that I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think he's on the Fedora project and it is great. It only comes from Europe. You've got to order it and after the conversion rate and shipping, it's going to be about a hundred bucks, but in the color calibration space, that's really not much to pay at all. And it comes with a live CD with Fedora on it and you just boot up from the, the CD to CD or DVD. I can't even remember, but you just boot up from that or you can burn that to a USB uh, image if you need to boot up in that and as soon as you plug in the color hug the gnome 3 color calibration tool comes up and walks you right through it for the really the high quality color setup it takes 20 to 30 minutes for that thing to run so don't think you're gonna do this quickly but you only have to do it once and you're good and I ran it on each of my two monitors and now they are gorgeous. The colors are right and consistent. Uh, I drag things from window. You probably can't see well on this phone, but these colors have never been the same like this before. This is all new. They used to be very different. They're different brand monitors and they're, they're even different. Like this is a TN panel and this over here is an IPS panel. So, so they're different brands, different models, different style monitors. The colors are accurate and they match and that is awesome. So I really recommend you stop your monitors from lying to you and get some kind of color calibration tool. And I really, really dig the color hug because it's open source hardware and you can run it, uh, basically put in that live DVD or CD and run it on anything and get a good color calibration. Now, the only knock on this thing, if you get one, uh, my only minor quibble, and it's pretty minor, is that you run the GNOME color calibration tool, and it says, done, and you go, because you don't know where in the world it put that ICC file. It turns out it actually puts it in a hidden folder, which is the default place where the GNOME color calibration tool sticks that. But I didn't know that, so I had to like bust open a terminal and do a find command and look for star.icc and eventually I turned it up and, I was eight, and then I just, you know, pop into USB thumb drive and I've got the ICC profile on the thumb drive and I can take it anywhere. But FYI, you might have to hunt for that ICC profile when it's done. So that could be a little smoother, but if you're, in, go, if you're going for like an open source colorimeter, and open source hardware and stuff, you're probably going to know how to find that stuff if you need to. Very, very minor, minor quibble. It worked great. I really recommend all this hardware here. Super good. Well, that's the show. Uh, next month, I'm hoping to talk about a rewrite of GeoPortal. Now, I've been you know reading the Brian Timoney stuff on design for a long time and the current geo portal is just really gotten really big and bloated and complicated not good and I'm going to rewrite it in a way that is extremely simple and it'll actually come with an embed tool so when you get to there's like a two-step where where are you and then once it knows where you are it goes to step two what the hell do you want to know? You'll be able to like embed that uh, straight from the site into other sites. It's going to be pretty cool. And I'm doing some like some underscore templates and some stuff I haven't fiddled with for pretty neat stuff. I'm just getting started, but by sometime next month, I should have enough to like do a screencast on that. Hopefully have some code for you until next time. Bye-bye.